Hi Greedy 3 Ds. welcome to today's episode. Now changing the LCD screen on your resin printer might seem like a daunting process but it really isn't that difficult and I found myself in a position where I needed to do it on my Saturn. Uh, the screen just got a little bit too damaged and uh, it was starting to put out some failed prints so I decided you know what I've got the opportunity to it was my birthday, I've had it as a gift, so I've got an, I've had a new LCD screen and I'm going to change that in my Saturn and I'll show you the process of doing it step by step. Now there are other videos out there and I'll link in the description to them. The Elegoo's own video is very good, but what I thought you might like to see today is me as an absolute novice in doing this, going through the process and hopefully it will give you the courage to have a crack at it yourself if ever you need to. Um, I hope you enjoy what you see today. Uh, if you do, please subscribe to the channel. Think about joining the Patreon. And if you want to buy one of these, there'll be a link in the description where you can get one from. So hope you enjoy the video today. Stay tuned. Here's the screen purchased from Amazon for £71. It is the official Elegoo replacement screen. And when it's arrived, there we go, the 4K Mono LCD panel from Elegoo. So let's have a look what's inside the box. First thing you're going to see when you open up and remove this polystyrene protective plate is the screen itself. There is a protective cover on the front and the back, so make sure you take that off at some stage and we'll talk you through that. There's also the ribbon cable, make sure you've got that. And inside you will see two lots of tape. You will see this black tape to seal the edges of the screen and you'll also have some tape inside to actually stick it to your printer make sure you keep that there's also some directions on there of where to go to uh, get some instructions for doing it now it's pretty straightforward pretty easy to be fair four screws on the side will take the side panel off and the first thing you do is pull the ribbon out and that's the connector you're looking for there's a little white uh, shoulder you lift up pull it out job done Next thing you do is you take out the screws on the top. Now there are two screws here and here that you do, and you can leave in, that's fine, but take everything else out. And before you pull the top off, inside is two connectors you must remove. They're two white connectors, pull them out carefully, and then you can take the top off and remove it from the unit. Now, next thing to do is take the black tape off surrounding the screen. I didn't catch that on film, but that's what you need to do next. And then we need to, well, this is where there was a bit of a spanner in the works, actually, because on the Elegoo site, it said there were four screws holding this in and there weren't on mine. And there haven't been on lots of them if you do a little bit of research. So literally just push the screen out. You need to push it quite firmly to get it out, but there are definitely no screws on mine and no holes for any screws either. I gave it a clean with an IPA cloth just to keep it uh, nice and clean and then I took these double-sided white sticky um, bits of tape now these are to hold the new screen in so just literally rip it off and put them down across the long edges on the horizontal and across the vertical and I thought how am I going to undo these this look a nightmare to get the other side of the tape off and I played with it and fiddled with it and I, I really couldn't do it but you know what it was really easy in the end all you need to do is stick them on like I've done there and then once they're actually on just take something like a little bit of a sharp thing I'm just using some cutters there lift the corner and pull and the bottom section actually stays on it's like a transparent double-sided bit of sticky tape and it was as simple as that and once I'd done the one the others were really really easy um, I did scratch my head at the start but it was really easy to do so and it's imperative you do it because this is what's going to hold it in place because obviously there are no screws Okay, so once that's done, we're going to connect the ribbon in and it's the same kind of thing. Push it in and push down the little shoulder to hold it in. Now thread the ribbon cable through the gap where you pulled the original one out of and thread the other section through. Remove the screen from the back of the LCD, the protective screen. Pop it down and push it down into place quite firmly with your fingers until it sticks down on the tape. Okay, and now that's done, we can connect it back up. So the two white connectors, connect them together and put the top on. It's pretty straightforward so far. Once you've done that, get your ribbon 
through the side panel and connect it back into where you took it out before. Make sure when you take it out, you have a look which way around it goes. Connect it through. Now I'm just going to turn it on and give it a test and mine did not work. Now it's quite a common fault with these. You can put the ribbon on back to front. I'm not the first to have done it. So uh, I'm going to put change the ribbon over. But um, just before I do that, just to hold the screen in place even firmer, I put some of the black tape on just to make sure that it's snug as a bug in a rug and it's not going anywhere. Now, again, the only thing holding this in place are the double sided sticky tape and these black bits of tape as well, because there aren't any screws on my model of Saturn. And I've got a reasonably old dish model, so yours might have screws, mine doesn't. There's the ribbon there, so I'm going to have to change that around. I'm disconnecting those wires again just to make sure that I don't damage anything. And I'm going to do what I did before, which is like lift the shoulder up, turn the ribbon around and connect it back in. Have a look when you disconnect it the first time around to see which way it goes. That's probably the easiest way to do it. And connect it all back together. Putting all your leads back in and we're ready for try number two. Connecting the ribbon into the side, into the main board. And I'm going to do a screen test. And thank God for that. It's worked this time. There was a sigh of relief because I'm no expert on stuff like this. I'll just muddle through with the rest of it. But I was so glad to see that. Now it's working. I'm going to connect everything back together. Put all the screws in that need to go in. and a screen protector goes on at this point. If I had one of these on at the first place, I wouldn't have needed to change the screen. So a screen protector most definitely going on. There'll be a link in the description where you can get them from. Next, you need to re-level your build plate. That's absolutely imperative because you've changed things. Re-level it all up. Just done a quick other test now to make sure it's still working and it's still working for you. Now it was time for my first print and I've done one of the frozen XP tests and uh, worked a treat. Really, really pleased with that. Did a bit of a resin test and I'm happy with the result that came through there. Now, if it's not printing for you, if you've got a problem, you may need to update your firmware. This is how you do it. Go to the Elegoo website, go to support, choose your Saturn and find the firmware option and you will download that. Now there's lots of different kinds of firmware. Have a look at your ribbon cable and that will give you an idea of which firmware you you're going to use. If you're not sure, follow the instructions on the site and download two files. Move these files to your USB stick, put them in your printer, turn your printer off, turn your printer on. The update LCD will automatically work and the next one there, the CBD file, you need to run it as if you're making a print of it and it will install the new firmware. Job done. OK, so there we go. That's all finished and done. I, I think you'll agree it wasn't such a traumatic experience as you may have imagined. Now, there was a couple of things that I came across, a couple of problems that I came across that we'll just talk about. Um, what I didn't show you on the actual uh, video was that one of the main screws as I was taking the, the main body off would not turn at all, uh, no matter what I used. And I don't use cheap, nasty Allen keys. I use quite an expensive Allen key. Um, it wouldn't turn it at all. So I'd got all the others off except one. And that left me with a dilemma. How do I get that off? Now, what I chose to do in the end was I managed to lift it up just a, sex, a tiny bit so I could get a hacksaw underneath and I cut that screw off. But you know, it's a problem you might come across. What I did find was the Allen keys that came with it, a couple of ones at the front that have got a little bit of resin in, it was having trouble turning with those in there. So my expensive um, Allen key that I'd, I'd had lying around for years, that did the trick really, really well. If it's a problem I've encountered, then it may very well be a problem you encounter. Um, the other thing was when I put the ribbon in, as you saw on the video, I put it in back to front, um, probably well worth when you take it apart, just monitor how it comes out and make a, take a picture maybe, make a note so that when you put it all back in, it works. And if it doesn't work, just try changing it around. It's a relatively quick fix. The other thing you're gonna do again, as we spoke about in the video, is the firmware update. If you do your test and you're not getting the uh, the rectangle test, it could be at that stage your firmware is, is, is in need of an update. So it might be at that stage you need to update your firmware. And again, if you go to the Elegoo website, they'll talk you through how to identify your printer and how to identify which one you need. But from, from my perspective, the actual ribbon cable told me everything I needed to know about the new LCD. Because remember, 
if you look at the serial number of your model, it might be different to the actual LCD screen. So you need to make sure you've got the right LCD screen going in there. On top of all that, it wasn't really a hard process. Um, it's quite rewarding when you do it. And, and, and I'm glad that I have done it now because I'll have the confidence if ever I need to do it again. And a £70 screen as opposed to a three £400 printer is, is really a no brainer. So again, I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen today. Leave some comments. That's really interesting to hear what you think about the process and any advice you want to give me and anybody else on the channel there. Um, subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the Patreon. All the details are in the description. And, um, and I will see you next time on Greedy3D, now with two fully working printers.